Well, it's something we all have to do at some point in our lives, and it's probably pretty safe to say it's something we all dread. I know I do. Taking my car to the shop. <sighs> you hear that noise, or one of those stupid little service engine lights comes on. Now, if you're like a lot of people, you get that fearful feeling, <laughs> great, what's this going to cost me? And Jimmy, that can be especially true for women, many of whom just don't feel like they have enough car knowledge. In fact, when it comes to car repairs, a recent Car Care Council survey found that 9 out of 10 women believe they are treated differently than men. And the U.S. Department of Labor reports 65% of the people who take their cars to repair shops are women. But only 1% of the people who work on cars are women. Now, that's all changing. It would not accelerate. It just wouldn't go. At all? At all. When Peggy Smiley brought her Santa Fe into the dealer, she immediately felt she could trust Aaron Lloyd, her service manager, partially because she's a woman. And I think that uh, her, her being here, it just it creates a, a sense that she will understand, have a little bit of empathy, you know, and, and try to try to make me feel comfortable. Like anyone, Peggy doesn't want to get ripped off. A study at Northwestern University confirms women are often charged higher prices for auto repairs, especially when they display no knowledge about cars. To me, it's it's about building up trust. Erin Lloyd determined how to be a technician in the Air Force, something she'd never tried before. So I really learned that if you put your mind to something, you can learn anything. So how do women better educate themselves when it comes to cars? First, get a clue. You can diagnose what's wrong before you hit the shop by using the Car MD tool. For $99, you can plug the handheld device into your car. It reads the car's computer codes and will give you a full report of what the problem codes indicate, as well as an average cost to fix it. Also, check out carcare.org to learn about typical repairs and questions to ask the mechanic. And when you get to the mechanic, use all your senses to describe the problem. For example, say you feel the car pulling to the left, particularly at speeds faster than 40 miles per hour. It's also a good idea to find a place you trust and stick with it. Well, I want them to feel comfortable and that it's not about their car, it's about them. Now, not only are women getting technical training in the military, but technical schools that offer auto repairs are seeing more and more women enter the automotive field. In fact, the number of women in the automotive field is projected to rise significantly over the next several years. Really? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's awesome. Now, you, something you said that is, is really, really important is nobody likes feeling taken advantage of. Right, right. So it's really, really important that you find a shop that you trust. Everybody wants to be treated fairly. Everybody wants to be treated honestly. According to Drive Steady, there are actually some telltale signs that you may want to find a new mechanic. The first sign is there are dusty cars on the lot. Also be wary of the mechanic's garage is the garage at his house. They probably don't have the diagnostic equipment to do the job right. Drive Steady says if your mechanic doesn't sound like an expert, be careful. You want to ask him to explain each car part and its function. Also, beware if the mechanic tells you your car is unsafe and you need to repair it right away. Drive Smart says all mechanics should be willing to give you your old parts back. So ask for them. It sends a clear message. You're watching. You're not going to be ripped off. Another sign it might be time for a new mechanic, no guarantee that could mean they're using refurbished or used parts. And finally, look over your bill carefully. DriveSmart says if you see something wrong, the mechanic should be willing to explain. Our automobiles not only need repairs when we hear a noise or, or when we feel it trying to pull one way or the other, what about after an accident? Dealing with the aftermath of a car crash can be overwhelming. From the insurance claims to the length of time it's going to take to fix your car, so in today's Angie's Report, how to make the task a little less daunting. Gary Neal didn't think a trip to the ballpark would end up in a visit to the body shop. I'm not the best driver in the world, so at first I was like, oh no, did I, have I done something? You know, like, did I make a really big boo-boo and didn't notice it? And then I was like, no, there's no way I could make a dent this big and not be aware of it. Neil discovered the dent after her daughter's softball game. She suspects the car parked in front of her did the damage. She immediately contacted her insurance agent, who gave her a list of recommended auto body shops. Angie's list says there's nothing wrong with using a shop that your insurance company recommends, but you're not required to by law. Neil decided to go with Bruce Kelly's shop, a shop she knows and trusts and has worked with in the past. They knew that we had two pretty young children, and it was summer and you know not not that there's ever a good time but not the easiest time to be 
kind of trying to juggle um, getting the repair made. Body shop owner Bruce Kelly says you should always check a shop's certifications and don't be afraid to ask questions. How secure is the shop? Do they have liability insurance? And most importantly, how long is the repair going to take? A lot of people have an expectation of repair. Things go wrong, parts have to be ordered, sometimes it's the wrong part. So we try to communicate with the folks over the period of the repair, but it's important to ask at the beginning for an expectation. Things change, but at least you have an idea. He says you should never assume a small dent is a small problem. Sometimes the damage is hidden. Sometimes it's a lot worse than what we see on the surface. I've had cars come in here with looks like a dent and we total the car. And finally, Angie's List says you should always ask the shop if they warranty their work. An auto body shop, whether it's one you're paying for out of pocket or one your insurance is paying for, should offer a lifetime warranty on repairs. And if they don't, you should find another one. Now, Angie's List recommends getting three or four estimates. If the repairs cost more than your deductible, finding an estimate may not be quite as important as your insurance company will probably cover the rest. <laughs> and I'll tell you what. Once you've gotten your car fixed, you are going to be thanking that mechanic over <laughs> and over again. And, you know, it's funny how mechanics always have a way to come and save the day, don't mm -hmm. they? Now, let's take it a step further. What about when they save a life? We want to share the story of a mechanic whose quick moves help save the life of a baby boy. And he couldn't do it without an app that gives people the chance to step up during a cardiac crisis. It all started inside this shop that sells valet slippers and tutus. The location of your emergency? 131 South Sherman. Is that still the Empire Dance Shop? Yes. Store clerk Leslie Record heard that a baby was turning blue and called 911. When you hear that, you just pick up the phone and call 911. So I did that and I saw her and she just was saying he's not breathing, he's not breathing. Leslie, a former lifeguard, put one-month-old Nolan on the ground and began rescue breathing. Meanwhile, two blocks away, master technician Jeff Olson was working on a car when his cell phone went off. And it sounded like an amber alert, you know, how they come out. And so I looked at it and it said CPR needed and it gave the address. And so Olson, who's a volunteer EMT, left his garage and raced to the dance shop. I asked the lady who was standing outside, have you got a medical emergency here? And she said, yeah, it's an infant. He's blue. And I said, you know, you just kind of suck up a little bit. And, and this, this guy came out of nowhere and just scooped the baby up and really knew what he was doing, which was just such a blessing to all of us. Also knew his life-saving skills were needed because he had registered his phone with the Pulse Point app. While fire paramedics were still several minutes away, the app put Olson in the right place at the right time to keep Nolan alive. I don't think I've ever done CPR on an infant before or even rescue breathing. And it was uh, when I got done, I shook for about 10 minutes. What happened to Nolan is the very first save since the fire department connected the Pulse Point to its dispatch center. The real benefit and the reason why we are so invested in this technology is because you can be a lifesaver. This is one of the only apps that, that you can download. If you know CPR, you could actually save somebody's life. Isn't that a remarkable story? Good save. And Good we, save. we've talked about Pulse Point on the show. It's, yeah. it's a new app. It's just incredible to see it actually saving lives. And this is just the beginning. It works. As a matter of fact, there is another new system that can make a big difference when people call 911. It's called Smart 911. Sussex County recently unveiled the technology, but it can be used across the country. Here's how it works. You open a profile and you can submit personal information online. What you choose, any information that you choose, medical conditions, identification records, you can put photos in if you want. That information will then be sent to responders in the case of an emergency with the goal being to help them in the time of crisis. What you're doing is really answering the dispatcher's questions before the emergency happens. It really gives the citizen a really proactive way to interact with 911 and provide information that can help them in an emergency when they're in a calm state. Now, wherever you are in the country, remember the dispatch centers only have access to that information during emergency calls. Now, if you'd like to sign up for Smart 911 or you'd like to read more about how it works, all you have to do is go to our website, WBOC.com, click on our picture right there at the top of the page. Saving a lot of valuable time yes. in, in the time of an emergency. Well, still to come on Delmarva Live, Sean Stryker is at Parkside High School learning about an event that will help drive up funds. Sean? 
That's right, we're driving up funds by test driving a car. Coming up, I'll have the details on the Drive for Your School event that's set to raise money for Parkside High School. And a little later on, driving yourself like you had never have before, we're going to hear the story of one athlete who competed in an Ironman competition. we we'll find out why the race was so much more than just beating his best time. Plus, let's find out how you can see some of the fittest athletes around. We're going to have a preview of the upcoming Ironman Maryland. Delmarva Live. We'll be back in a moment.